A small gust of air washes over you with the faint whispers of winter's chill as fall always brings. Surveying the countryside of eastern Poland from your dug-in fighting position all seems quiet and normal on this brisk September day. Out among the rolling hills, a low rumbling begins to intensify from every direction. Fear begins to grip you while you scan the ridge line across the valley from your unit's trench line. You see what appears to be dozens of dark gray tanks moving at incredible speed straight towards you, all of which are flying an unmistakable flag, a white circle on a red field with a black geometric design made of right angles, the flag of Nazi Germany. Within minutes, the armored hulks have cut swaths through the tall brown fall grass and are within range of your dugout. Weapons begin firing, and to your horror, none of the shots seem to find any weakness in the armor to slow the onslaught of the behemoths. As sure as your fate is sealed, so is the nature of warfare from this moment forward. How did this happen? Who was the progenitor of such change in human conflict? Today on Nutty History, we intend to find out how the German Blitzkrieg changed the scope of war. World War I was the first major conflict utilizing modern arms. This includes aircraft, fully automatic machine guns, submarines, precise artillery, chemical weapons, and of course, the tank. Even though these modern era weapons were used by all sides in the conflict, the tactics used more often closely resemble those utilized during the American Civil War. Cavalry and bayonet charges were the most common methods of taking ground from the opposing force, despite modern equipment being available. The method used to field these technologies effectively were in their infancy. The battlefield doctrine of the generals had not caught up to the technological advances of the inventors. It was in this environment that a young German officer named Heinz Guderian started his military career, a career that ultimately would alter the course of armed conflict. Heinz Guderian was born in 1888 in eastern Prussia, which would later become part of Germany and now modern Poland near the river Vistula. His father was an officer in the Prussian military and early on decided that Heinz would follow in his footsteps of military service. Heinz was sent to military secondary schools where he learned French and English. This allowed him to study the tactical doctrines of other European countries. Guderian was also trained in the Germanic doctrine of war. This focused on meticulous analyzation of previous contemporary engagements, precise planning and execution of strategy that homed in along a Schwerpunkt, which means a focal point or center of gravity. This focal point would be the main line on which an attack or focus of a battle would fall along, with every part of the highly detailed battle plan working together in unison to achieve this singular goal. It was with these lessons that Guderian would step into the quagmire of the First World War. At the outbreak of World War I, Heinz Guderian was serving as a second lieutenant in the 10th Hanover Light Infantry Battalion. His role was that of a communications officer in charge of battalion-level radio communication, radio communication being a relatively new concept in military technology. It was here that Guderian began to realize the importance of effective communications on the battlefield. Previously, communications between commanders in the field as well as the higher command personnel was done through a variety of means, including soldiers running physical dispatches and communiques back and forth. They also used carrier pigeons and flags. With the advent of the telegraph communications improved, but with the wireless capability of the radio, this gave commanders real-time battlefield data for the first time in history. This capability and how it changed the battlefield was not lost on Guderian. As a whole, World War I showed the world that the face of war indeed was changing. Alfred von Schleifen said in 1909, not a horseman will be seen. The cavalry will have to accomplish its task out of range of the artillery. Breed loaders and machine guns will have obliterated the cavalrymen quite mercilessly from the battlefield. Even such an astute tactician as von Schleifen could not influence the whole of the high command to embrace new methods of war. This was something that Guderian would face as well in the wake of the Great War. After the dissemination of World War I and the ensuing political and financial upheaval in Europe, Germany was left shackled by sanctions written in the Treaty of Versailles. Just a few of these restrictions included a limit of Germany's standing army of 100,000 troops, no submarines, no tanks, and equally heavily armored vehicles. This meant that Germany was technologically hobbled compared to other countries, 
Most in the German high command went along, albeit begrudgingly, with these terms. It was not until 1922 that Guderian would have a chance to bring Germany into the modern era of warfare. Serving in the Truppenant, the troop office, which is what the German high command became, under the Treaty of Versailles, especially forced Germany to dissolve their Pentagon. Guderian was tasked by General Schischwitz to conduct research into the feasibility of transporting infantry via motorized means to carry out their combat roles. This notion sprung from the plain fact that Germany could not, under Versailles restrictions, muster enough troops to cover any expanse of territory. Thus, Germany's military would need to be as mobile and as fast as possible to bring enough force to bear along the Schwerpunkt to repel an attack. See, that doctrine of concentrating all force in parts of a plan on a singular objective still held sway in the German tactical meta, if you will. Guderian brought all his tactical acumen and schooling to bear on this project, studying extensively both British, who invented the tank, and French armored doctrines. Being that he had fluent grasp of both languages, he was well suited for the job. From 1922 to roughly 1935, Guderian served in various capacities within the Truppenant, which was at this point operating like the general staff at high command that was forbidden by Versailles, developing mechanized warfare doctrine and instructing field troops on its use with lightly armored trucks that were all that was permitted under Versailles. Until 1934, shortly after Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, General Oswald Lutz of the Motor Brigade within the Truppenamt instructed Guderian to develop three Panzer or tank brigades for Germany, which was a part of Hitler's plan for rearmament in direct violation of the Versailles Treaty. Just how was Germany able to arm itself before World War II? That, my friends, is the topic for another video. But suffice to say that for now, by 1934, when Guderian was tasked to create the first Nazi Panzer forces, there was little left to subterfuge. As Germany rearmed in earnest, Guderian worked to play his part by creating the first modern tank forces. In his eyes, the first big factor in making these tank forces as effective as possible was to create a real-time communication network that linked the tank forces through two-way radio technology. This was a requirement for the development of German panzers, tanks, with two-way radio technology installed into the tank. This allowed the individual tank commander to not only receive communication, but transmit to other tanks as well as higher-up command structures. With this capability, German tanks were leaps and bounds ahead of those within the other European armies by giving field commanders real-time communication with their troops, allowing them to create an up-to-date picture of the battlefield in real time, a truly modern capability. When it came to doctrine, Guderian studied past engagements during World War I, where tanks had been employed by the British and French. This led to his doctrine of Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War. In this doctrine, Guderian took the German concept of the Schwerpunkt and applied it to tank warfare. Applying maximum force on a small area instead of spreading tank forces out along a wide front would mean that German panzer forces would be able to overwhelm enemy opposition and break through their lines, lessons directly taken from the tank battlefields of World War I. All these advancements meant that Germany's armored forces were the most advanced and modern in the world at the time. On September 1, 1939, Germany unleashed this new method of war on Poland. Some 2,000 German panzers steamrolled through any opposition the Poles could muster. In just over a month, the country fell to the Nazis, with France following suit in June of 1940 with similar rapidity. World War II had now begun. Modern era weapons being utilized in modern ways led to rapid defeats and encirclements. Allied forces now needed to play catch up to the German forces in order to defeat them. Guderian's doctrine and development of Germany's armed forces changed the face of warfare, not just during World War II, but moving forward through human conflict. Maneuver warfare tactics of Guderian can be seen throughout warfare from World War II to modern conflicts. During the first Gulf War in 1991, commonly referred to as Desert Storm, Coalition Commander U.S. General Norman Schwarzkopf utilized coalition mechanized forces to smash through Iraqi armor and prepared positions in the same way that the German Panzer forces rolled over Polish and French lines in early World War II. Approximately three days of fighting allowed the coalition forces to liberate Kuwait from Iraqi occupation. Modern infantry forces around the world now are transported around the battlefield in highly mobile and armored vehicles and aircraft. During the invasion of Iraq in March of 2003, it took American forces less than a month to roll through Iraqi forces 
all the way to the capital in Baghdad. Moving in armored personnel carriers and tanks, they outpace the Iraqi opposition and fix positions at lightning speed. Heinz Guderian's military success with his Blitzkrieg shows that it is not always possessing new technology that makes one successful, but those that figure out the most efficient way to employ those new inventions that in the end prevail. Guderian, a communications officer, figured out how to best employ weapons of the modern era and thus change the face of warfare forever. If you can think of another person throughout history who hacked their new technology of their era and changed the way we all do things, let us know in the comments below. From us at Nutty History, we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And make sure to hit that notification bell to be alerted when new videos drop. And we will catch you on the next one.